Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer and I'm an interior designer, store owner, and educator. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to begin decorating your space. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram. All right, let's jump into it. Maybe you've just built a home and are starting from scratch. Or maybe you've lived in your home for a long time and are ready to refresh it with new decor. Either way, the process can be overwhelming and end in disaster if not approached correctly. So these principles I'm gonna talk about are the foundations to a good design. If you understand these three principles and apply them correctly, your efforts will be successful. All right, so the first step is to declutter. This applies to those who are redecorating or refreshing a space. Clutter is a major roadblock when it comes to decorating. Joshua Becker said, the first step in crafting the life you want is to get rid of everything you don't. And I really believe that. So I tell my clients all the time that we really cannot begin until the clutter is taken care of. And I'll say something like, I want to get you to a point where you love your space, but we're going to need to remove some things in order to do that. And it's hard. I know it can be hard for me. There are many reasons you may be dealing with clutter. Perhaps you have kids or you've inherited a lot of things from a parent who has passed and you can't let go of it because of the memories attached. And that can be so difficult emotionally. But I tell my students, People don't need criticism, they need solutions. And this applies to you as well. Do not beat yourself up for having clutter. It happens, but recognize it and come up with some solutions to that issue. Here are a few simple ways I help keep clutter at bay or hidden. So for instance, one way that I keep clutter off of my nightstand, because your bedroom's a very important room to be decluttered. But the way I do that is in my top drawer, I have these little boxes that have dividers. So I've got my glasses, any medicine, lotion, AirPods, anything I need, and it's sectioned off, kept organized, and my nightstand looks clutter-free. Another way that I keep my home clutter-free is in my office, I also have these different storage containers. And if you need some, I'll put a link in the description of this video, but I love them. I have different ones that have drawers, different ones that open, but this really helps me keep organized. I would love to show you my office, but we are going to be redoing my office in the next few months. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me over there, Jennifer Decorates, because I'll have some photos and show you a little bit along the way. So maybe you need a drawer by the door to hold your mail and keys as a dropping station. Maybe you need baskets for your kids' toys. Whatever it may be, do some thinking about solutions to your clutter and establish new habits to avoid things piling up. And maybe you have too much decor. This counts as clutter as well. Do you have too many photo frames and knickknacks sitting around? Well, in order to create a new space, you're really going to need to consider letting go of most of those items. With photo frames, I suggest creating a gallery wall somewhere. This is a great way to display those photos without so many different photo frames cluttering up a table, top, or a bookcase. But that's just one example of a solution to decor clutter. The big thing is being willing to let go of things that don't absolutely bring you joy, represent who you are today, or have sentimental meaning to you. The second tip, is to understand layering. Layers are the elements that make up your design, such as paint, furniture, textiles, etc. These items must be selected in the correct order because it is a domino effect. It's like the children's book. If you give a mouse a cookie, he will probably want some milk to go with it. Well, if you change the paint in a room, you're probably gonna need a new rug to go with it. So it's important to know where to begin. And for the most part, I recommend starting with the largest items in the room. 
An example of that would be if you have a newly built home with the floors and paint already finished but have nothing else in the bedroom. Well, the bed. It's going to be the first thing you choose. Then the other pieces of furniture, then the textiles, and then accessories, etc. Another example would be if you had a bedroom where you already had all the furniture but you hated the paint and textiles. Well, then your largest layer would be the paint. Then you choose the textiles like drapes and bedding that coordinate well with the paint color. Everyone's situation has a different set of circumstances and requires a different starting point. But here's my rule of thumb. Anything that falls under the construction umbrella must be done first. Paint, wallpaper, flooring, tile work, cabinetry, all must be done first. It is your first layer. Why? Because the rest of your design choices hinge on the outcome of those projects and choices. For instance, if you know you want to paint the room and change the flooring, it would be out of order to purchase a rug first. So for instance, I am in my living room and we just finished renovating it. We did the kitchen, we did the floors, we did this wood wall, we put the brick up and we repainted. So it really wouldn't have made any sense at all for me to pick my textiles until I knew how all of those colors were gonna work in this room. Well, I knew I wanted to reupholster these chairs. I've had them a long time and I absolutely love them. So I chose that fabric first and then I chose some drapes to go with the chairs. And then lastly, I chose the rug and they all flow beautifully together. You need to select the proper layers in order. Start with the larger scale items and focal points and move down to the details. Before I give my last tip, I want to take a moment to tell you about my online interior design course. I've been designing for over 20 years and I wrote an interior design course. I take people who are interested in design to becoming full-time designers, making the money, doing what they love. From design education to business strategy, my course teaches you everything you need to know to start a successful interior design business without a degree. Maybe you're someone who loves to decorate and maybe your friends even ask you to help them with their own home decorating. Or maybe your kids have just flown the nest and you're looking for your next adventure. Whatever it may be, my online course will propel you to be a successful interior designer. So I'll leave a link to my course website in the description of this video. Go check it out and begin your journey to becoming an interior designer today. All right, now back to the video. The third tip is to plan your cohesive details. Cohesiveness is achieved when all the elements come together in a design. This can be done by recognizing a color in a fabric pattern and using the same color in the artwork and then echoing a familiar color in the rug. That ties everything together. And when done correctly, your space should feel intentional. Now a few good rules to abide by are these. Wood tones, no more than two kinds. Metals, no more than two finishes. Color, keep them in the same family. There are, of course, exceptions to these rules, but for the most part, I do recommend sticking within those parameters. Now, why are details important? Well, the details are the characteristics of your chosen elements. Think of the patina of a light fixture, the fringe of a pillow, the frame of the artwork, furniture hardware. These details need to come together or your design will fall flat. For a polished and perfected design, do not overlook the details. Coordinated details provide a room unity, but when ignored, can make a room feel aimless. Pay attention to the details. Consider how you could tie together items to achieve that cohesiveness we talked about. I recommend making a mood board, which is a visual display of your choices. This will show you how well your design flows. It's funny, sometimes I think something will look absolutely perfect in the design, but then I place it in the mood board and it just jumps out at me as not being correct at all. So place your selected items in a mood board to really see how cohesive your design will be. These are the three tips I recommend using when you're beginning the design process in a space. When you get rid of the clutter 
It gives you a blank space to work with. And when you assess the proper layers needed, you will avoid making mistakes. And when you plan out your details, they will all come together for an intentional and cohesive look. I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.